Well, just imagine, you plugged in your car at a EV charger, you just grabbed a coffee, and by the time you take your first sip, your electric car is charged with 400 kilometers of range. Sounds like a dream, right? But BYD just made it a reality. Well, this could be a massive turning point for electric vehicles in the world. Today, let's dive deep into BYD's revolutionary charging tech and what it means for the world of EVs, how it works, and much more. So what exactly BYD achieved? Well, uh, they developed a 1000 kilowatt hour charging system that allows your EV to be charged up to 400 kilometers of range in just five minutes. And that's almost as quick as you refueling your car at any petrol station, if not quicker. So here's how they did it. They actually did it in three main areas. The first one is their liquid cooling system. This tech allows them to manage heat, providing a safe as well as a stable ultra fast charging speed. Well, next gen silicon power chips, which allows the system to be effective and efficient. And finally, the 1000 volt architecture. This allows the car to be charged up to the max rate of 1000 kilowatt per hour, which is quite a lot. Currently, the EVs that I own are peaked at um, my BYDs, I, I believe, up to 80 kilowatt hours. And the Tesla that I have is peaked at 175 kilowatt hour. So imagine charging it almost, if not 10 times, let's say seven, seven times faster than what I currently do. In case of my BYD, it's more than 10 times faster. So you can imagine how quick that would be. Well, how this impacts EV adoption? Uh, well, if you think about it, current infrastructure as well as the charging speeds that we have allows our car to be charged in 15 to 30 minutes for a reasonable amount of charge. And uh, BYD's breakthrough could change that completely. The first biggest benefit is no longer charging stops because your EV could be charged in five minutes. That's better than filling up a fuel car because in that case, you have to actually go inside a shop or store to pay for the fuel but with most of the EV chargers it's already linked to a card and you just have to tap it or in case of a charger like Tesla you don't, don't have to do that even you just take the charger plug it in and that's all you have to do and if charging is no longer a pain point maybe that'll allow a lot of other users who are just thinking about switching to EV to actually make the, make the move and you know buy an electric car and the benefit actually goes way beyond just buying electric cars for general public. Because think about uh, all the ride shares or even public transports. What if a bus, like a big bus, could be charged, let's not say five minutes, but uh, assuming 10 minutes for 400 kilometers, that would be taking care of at least half of their day run. And think about it. If EVs don't need to be charged for that long, do we even need bigger batteries? Well, more on that later. Well, here's a bigger question. Is the world even ready to have a five-minute charging system? Peabody is planning to build 4,000-plus ultra-fast charging stations in China. But what about the rest of the world? Well, well, well. Here are some challenges which we need to consider. The first one is massive power demand. Like, if you think about it, 1,000 kilowatt hour for one car. And imagine they're like 10 stalls it would mean a lot of load for the power grid to handle. And uh, coming back to the second point, which is getting the infrastructure set up, because it's not very easy to set up such a huge uh, power-based system. And it's not just about setting up the infrastructure. Think about the cost of all those 1,000 kilowatt hour systems. It won't be cheap for sure. And last but not least, will other EVs be compatible? Because if you are using this charger just for your BYD cars. It won't help Tesla, Ford, Hyundai, and Kia cars, right? Until and unless international standard change and everyone can use the same tech. So while this is all exciting, we still need a major uh, infrastructure change when it comes to adapting this technology for our EV day-to-day -day use. Now let's talk about EV industry change. Well, BYD has been growing at insane speeds outselling Teslas in uh, case of production. And with this tech, they just, I think, took a very big leap forward when it comes to getting a uh, brand reputation as well as something to look forward to in an EV. Well, think about it. The 
biggest network that any EV maker have is Tesla. Undoubtedly Tesla, because their supercharger network is already uh, really good. And it's one of the best if you compare with any other networks. So they would need to respond. And uh, I'm sure they can either make the car last longer, which means they, their cars can drive for longer distances, which would mean if you're driving for, let's assume, 1,000 kilometers and your car can do 800 kilometers, it wouldn't matter for you to maybe stop for 5 minutes or 15 in that case. But uh, if you think about all the other EVs, they might need to uh, get a sort of a license from BYD to use this tech. And if that happens, that's great because then BYD can actually get benefits of this tech as far as, you know, whatever the R&D department have put in their effort as well as they can make some money out of it while allowing all the uh, other EV users as well as the companies to get benefit from this amazing tech. But if you think about it, the EV charging infrastructure need to change. Like that's the only uh, future I see for EV adaptation. It doesn't matter if your car charges on 5 or 15 if you don't have a charger in your uh, place or as well as uh, if you're traveling in a remote area. If you don't have a charger there, it doesn't matter if your car can charge in 5 minutes. If there's no charger fast enough to support it, well, it's not going to charge on itself, right? With at least fuel, you can have uh, like a you can carry extra fuel if you know you're going in an area where there won't be fuel. But with electric cars, you can carry the trickle charger, and you can use any outlet to charge it. But it won't be fast. Now let's get back to the discussion of will this reduce EV costs? Well, there are certain things to consider, right? Like if we have a car that can charge in five minutes for a reasonable amount of, uh, I think, kilometers, would we even need the current, I think, setup, which is uh, closer to 60 kilowatt hours to 100 kilowatt hour generally in the vehicles? So if your car can charge very quickly and there's enough uh, infrastructure around your city or your place you live, do you even need those big batteries then? But what that means is your cars can get cheaper as well as you can save a lot of uh, building material for the batteries, which would be good for environment. And this part is, like, if you reduce the amount of cells used in your car, that would mean your cars are lighter, which would mean they are more efficient. So if, technically, if you don't need a long-range car, then you can have a quick charge stop. Let's, let's assume your daily run is 100 kilometers and your car's range is 250 kilometers which would mean real world maybe 200, right? So even if it's 200 and if you have a charger or a system which allows you to charge in, let's say, three or four minutes, you don't mind plugging it in every other day. And uh, if that kind of system exists and the cars are cheaper, maybe that will shift the mindset of people who are not considering buying an EV at all. And hence the charging infrastructure as well as this tech is not just about getting your EVs charged faster, it could mean you getting EVs that are cheaper. Well, if you think about it, there's a couple of challenges which could be a deal breaker. The first one is this tech is available only in China for now. Will BYD would be releasing it for the worldwide stage or not? We're not sure yet. The second thing is the infrastructure and support by government policies and such because not every country would be allowing their grid to be stretched to that level of consumption, and they might need uh, some further investigations into risks of catching fire and equipment failure or the grid failure or whatever. So it's not going to be as simple as we might think that you just get a car which charges quickly and it solves an issue, right? And last but not least is, will BYD uh, allow other car charges to be or other cars to be using the same tech as we discussed because if they don't then uh, if it's exclusive to BYD I believe the adaptation for the infrastructure is even harder because I can see that Tesla has been doing this since 2013 like setting up their superchargers and there's still not enough superchargers in the world well if these challenges are sold we're looking at a future where charging is no longer a bottleneck and just imagine electric vehicles becoming as fast 
and convenient as petrol cars. Cheaper, smaller batteries, making electric vehicles more affordable. And finally, a world where charge or range anxiety is completely eliminated. Sounds exciting, right? So, what do you think? Is BYD 5-minute charging a true game changer? Or are there still too many challenges? Well, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Well, if you enjoyed this breakdown, hit the like button, subscribe for more deep dive into EV tech and the future of electric vehicles. Until next time, just drive safe and hopefully this fast charging could be a reality very soon.